thanks for coming back and we've gone over all the basics for the big three squat bench and deadlift all the way from warming up to locking out the lifts and now we're going to move into secondary exercises and we're going to start with high bar so think about like high bar ssb camber those are in the, those are coming up bench like close grips photos larsons deadlifts we'll do pauses eccentric pauses pauses off the floor tempos all that so over the next what five six weeks or so Stick around and yeah. we'll teach you a few things. Get stronger. Okay. Alright guys, what's up? Uh, so as Brian stated in the, in the intro, we're going to be going into supplemental, sorry, secondary movements. <laughs> Leave that in there. Uh, <laughs> we're going to be going into secondary movements and we're going to start with high bar squats. So this yeah. is a personal favorite of mine to give to clients. Uh, for one, it's a really easy exercise to do. All you need is a straight bar. You don't need any specialty equipment. You can perform this exercise anytime, anywhere, as long as you have a barbell. So uh, we're gonna go over a couple reasons why you might perform this movement, all right? So before we get into how to perform it and where to put it in your programming, we're gonna tell you why you should be doing it in the first place. So there's gonna be two common themes that we see when putting a high bar squat into a program. The first is gonna be for somebody who cannot handle a lot of low bar squatting. Hi. like Branson and my friend Brian here. Yeah. All right. Because our they, mobility they, is... Well, it's not... They're very, very lazy about doing their mobility work, so they have to, uh, they have to, do, they have to do a lot of a lot of high bar squats. Uh, actually, in the past, I've had Ranson perform high bar squats up until about like six weeks out. Six weeks out, and he's it's worked very, very well for him, and he doesn't need to spend a lot of time low bar squatting just because he has the skill developed to low bar squat. So uh, that is common occurrence number one. Uh, second one as you can probably guess, is gonna be for hypertrophy purposes, all right? For somebody that's gonna be far out from a competition and we need to focus on developing their quads, right? That's gonna be the main focus for performing a high bar squat, right? For, for that reason anyway. So somebody who can't handle a lot of low bar squatting and somebody who needs to put on some leg tissue. So now we're gonna dive into how to perform both of those for those reasons. Hi everybody. <laughs> All right, so we're going to go over why to high bar squat for hypertrophy reasons. So if you got tiny quads, it's a great movement for them. Um, everyone can benefit from more tissue overall in their body, I believe. Um, so high bar squatting is one of the best ways to really develop some really good quads. Now there's a few things you want to do with this. You want to have an elevated heel, for one, uh, that's going to allow deeper range of motion. Uh, which for hypertrophy is what you want. You want more of a range of motion for things. Um, so wearing either an Olympic lifting shoe, um, you know, a heeled lifting shoe, or just standing on like a 45 pound plate, or you know, if you have like a random piece of wood laying around, people will like put their heels on two by fours. Um, any of that's gonna help. Uh, secondly, what you're wanting, gonna do is have a bit more narrow stance. Cause as we know, the wider your stance is, the more you're gonna involve your glutes, your hips, uh, and like hamstrings a bit more than you would your quads. So, Amber's gonna get in here on the bar here and kind of show you about the stance we're gonna go for. So, skits out, and actually I'd go just a tad narrower than that. So, <clears throat> fairly narrow. Um, I do like to have my toes a bit forward because it's a bit more overall quad that way. Um, changing toe direction for hypertrophy purposes will change what part of the quad is hit a little bit more. So if you're wanting to hit a little more inner thigh, toes out. If you're wanting more, um, honestly with this, more out of thigh, just overall, just more toes straight. Um, so just overall quad development, this toes a little bit more forward and straight in line is gonna be about what you want here. What we wanna look for is a lot more forward knee travel. So a yes. lot more knee flexion. Yeah, so not as much opening up the legs and, and hips as much for, a, for when you're looking for higher per tree purposes, um, but just, just straight up over the knees, nice and deep, is going to get you the best results with this. So would you say like a shoulder width apart or maybe slightly inside of that is a good general rule of thumb? Yes. Cool. The, if going outside of shoulder width, you're starting to involve too much yeah. hamstrings, right. hips, <laughs> everything else. So right around shoulder width, maybe a little bit inside of it, I find is pretty much perfect for people with that. Um, with uh, hypertrophy purposes also, 
Um, thing to throw in to make it even more difficult with lighter weight, tempo work. I love giving people tempos for hypertrophy. It's amazing. And when I'm saying tempos, I'm talking four second negatives, not a four count. A lot of people go one, two, three, four. No. One Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi, four. True four seconds. Down, and then sometimes even giving tempos back up. All the time under tension yes. from that builds a lot of tissue. You're breaking down more fibers to rebuild. That's the purpose of it. So tempo work for that is way better than just normal reps. And normal reps have their place, and you can still get a lot of results out of that. But throwing in tempo work for a few weeks, you'll be really surprised about how much growth you can get. I know we're talking about hypertrophy, but mm -hmm. also with the tempo work, that's be a really, really easy way to identify some form breakdown with somebody. Absolutely. You know, if somebody has, uh, with high bar, there's obviously a lot more demand here to keep your hips stacked underneath you if we're talking about forward knee travel. If she pushes her butt back right away, that's going to take away from the forward knee travel that she has in the squat. Yep. So if you incorporate a tempo and she really focuses on keeping that pelvis stacked underneath her, keeping those glutes pulled in, it's going to show up right away with that tempo if she's able to maintain that position or not. So, yeah. Also, this tempo work really helps with bracing as well. Absolutely. A lot of people don't think about that, but a good way to improve overall bracing, <clears throat> stuff like tempo work, because you're forced to brace the entire time. Once you lose that brace, you're breaking down form, and then you're going to have a bad time. No one wants you're that. Gonna you're going to have, gonna have a bad time. Come right. over here real quick. Let's just talk real quick about the bar placement. Uh, yeah, so, absolutely. on Amber, you can see here, move your hair, sorry. <laughs> so, I have been bad at this in the past of putting it too high on the neck. Oh, fuck that. Oh. Oops. Then you're really going to have a bad yeah. time. Chris helped me by pushing it down right on top of the traps. Yep, we want the bar slightly, we want the bar slightly above the rear delts on the traps not on the top of the traps, mm -hmm. right in the middle of the, the meatiest part of the traps right there. It's a lot easier to show with Brian just because he's got this fucking gorilla neck. So, uh, <laughs> so yeah, there we go. I will say the bigger your traps are, kind of the harder it is to find that spot. Absolutely. Like me and Brian both have pretty big traps. Mine's all over. And both of us have had issues with sitting the bar for high bar mm -hmm. too high because of that. Um, but if you have smaller traps, it's easier to have it in that position. Um, so it's just kind of playing around with it to find exactly where it feels the best, honestly, is, is going to be your best bet, I'd say. Cool. All right, guys. So as we said in the uh, beginning portion, we have two different situations where we might program a high bar squat for a lifter. Uh, Ransom covered the, hyper the hypertrophy purposes. I'm going to cover the portion where I might program a high bar squat for somebody who simply cannot uh, – handle the demand of low bar squatting consistent, consistently week in and week out due to lack of shoulder mobility. So there's going to be a couple key differences here for this, this high bar squat than what we might see if we're programming it for hypertrophy purposes. The biggest thing that we're going to see is the foot placement and the stance width. If I have somebody that is performing a high bar squat for the sake of not being able to low bar squat due to the strain it puts on the shoulders, I'm going to keep their stance width the same as their competition stance for a low bar squat, all right? Because we're only doing this squat because she cannot handle the demand of low bar squatting. So I want to eliminate any other variables that might, have, that might change this movement. So we're gonna keep the stance width the same and our hand placement is gonna be the same as well because this is gonna pl place a little bit more demand on maintaining T-spine extension and just keeping our upper back and our lats tight during the movement. So we're not gonna bring the hands closer because I don't wanna make this easier for her. Right? We're trying to strengthen the upper back here, so she's going to keep her hands wide where she really, really has to focus on spreading that bar apart and pulling her lats down, getting her lats down and wide. I like to tell people when they're cueing for lat tightness in the squat, think of a bodybuilder, right? Like Branson, he can probably do this better than me, but how they get their lats nice and wide when they're posing, right? That's what we want to do under a barbell when we're getting ready to squat, whether it's high bar or low bar. So go ahead and rack it. <coughs> So that's going to be the two biggest differences we see there for this, this version of a high bar squat versus what Ransom covered. Stance width is the same, and we're going to leave the hand place with the same as we would for a low bar squat as well. And touch real quick, I just want to emphasize, remember, it's two things. You're not just spreading, you're not just pulling, you're doing both. You're doing both. And a lot of times people forget one or the other. Yep. It's a simultaneous thing. <clears throat> oh, go ahead. Sorry, get back under the bar and unwrap it again. <laughs> uh, something else that I see quite a bit too 
And now there, there are situations where this is applicable, but uh, we see people, they will excessively jam their elbows under the bar. They'll get the, they'll get the bar really high up in the hand here and try to get their elbows under the bar as much as they can. What happens when people often do this is they'll bring their rib cage with them and they'll get into a big lumbar extension here and the rib cage will flare. So we want to keep these elbows back and down, right? We don't want to jam them under the bar, right? I want her to focus on the cueing of spreading the bar and pulling her lats down. Wherever her elbows end up as a consequence of doing that is fine. I don't want her to worry about what direction her elbows are pointing unless they're like way up here like this and that's obviously not good. So we really want to make sure that we keep this whole torso stacked here just like we uh, covered in previous squat videos where we want to avoid any flaring here and losing our brace. So go ahead and read back. So what I'm doing while I'm under the bars, I'm actually thinking about spreading my lats and then depressing down. So we've gone over this a few times is uh, the lats are spinal stabilizers. So if you're not activating them, you're going to collapse. Yeah, hold over. So, all right, execution. Mm -hmm. yeah. So uh, biggest thing that I want to cover here, uh, first thing I want to point out here for executing the high bar squat is when Amber goes to start the squat, she's already in a hinged position, all right? She already has her hips slightly back here, right? She's engaging her glutes and hamstrings just to stabilize. She's not loading into them. She's not going to sit back at the start of the squat, but she's going to start in a hinge position. She's not going to start perfectly upright. Like get as upright as you can. Like get, yeah. Like see this. This is not an ideal position to start from, right? So we want to put ourselves slightly into a hinge here. That way we have the posterior chain loaded and ready to go. And then from here, Amber is going to. She's not going to sit back, right? We're going to get an even break from the hips and the knees at the same time. So another way you could think about this is she's going to try to pull her ass straight down to her heels. And then from there, I was going to have you pause there, but <laughs> come back up. All right, so you can see when she breaks, when I say pull your ass to your heels, that's able to, show, that's able to give us a very even break from the hips and the knees. So from there, when we start going down into a, uh, about a quarter of the way down, uh, a lot of people start to worry about what direction their knees are pointing. And whether people realize it or not, they over-exaggerate that knees out, even if they're not focusing on it. I see it all the time, which is going to lead to that over-supination of the foot where we have all that weight on the outside of our feet and we're losing good rooting. So what I like to tell people for this, for high bar especially, and we, I like to tell people this for all squat variations, is we just want to tell our knees to follow our toes. So we've gone over all the setup and everything in previous videos. So we're going to assume that Amber's feet are angled in the direction that they should be pointed in. So not perfectly straightforward, not too flared. They're about right in between at about 30 degrees. So I'm going to tell her to just focus on pushing her knees in the direction that her toes are pointing. So knees follow the toes. So we have pull your ass to your heels, gives us a nice even break from the hips and the knees. And the knees follow the toes, which when we're, we're in the bottom of the squat, if you come around the front here, you can see that her knee is tracking perfectly over her foot, right? She's not overly supernate, she's not overly externally rotated, and her knees aren't caving in either. And she's, she's in neutral. She's in a neutral range, so that way when she comes up out of the hole, we're not going to see excessive caving from her knees when she comes back up. A nice neutral high bar squat. Good. There you go. One final thing I'm going to discuss is when we initiate the squat. Uh, a lot of time we'll see people dive bomb their squat. That leads to form breakdown uh, and you can have some troubles getting out of the hole. So what I like to have people do is to create tension at the top, hold themselves down, and then allow themselves to drop into that hole. So again, we're going to create tension, nice and slow, and then develop speed. That's it. Simple. Thanks for checking out our high bar video. Uh, next yep. week we'll go over a bench variation. What that might be, find We're out. Keep that a secret. We'll probably decide last minute. Yeah. <laughs> you don't have to tell them that. <laughs> yeah, but we'll probably decide last minute. As uh, always, big shout out to our sponsors, Feed Me, Fight Me, and Stoke Cold Brew. Yep. Stoke, <laughs> if you see this, please respond. We love you. Anyways, thanks for coming again, and uh, we'll see you next week. Yeah. Oh, yeah.